Thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited you could be here with us for the third week of Advent. This year, we celebrate the sweetest story we have ever heard. And on today, December 12th, 2021, we hear from the angels. Announcements this week are, the children's Christmas program will be December 19th at 10.15 there will only be one service that day. The youth group will be serving breakfast that same morning before the children's program from 9.30 to 10, free will donation and all proceeds support our adopted Christmas family. There will be two Christmas Eve services this year held on Friday, December 24th at five o'clock and seven o'clock. From Isaiah chapter 6, in the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a high and exalted throne, the edges of his robe filling the temple. Winged creatures were stationed around him. Each had six wings. With two, they veiled their faces. With two, their feet. And with two, they flew about. They shouted to each other, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heavenly forces. All the earth is filled with God's glory. The doorframe shook at the sound of their shouting, and the house was filled with smoke. I said, Mourn for me, I'm ruined. I'm a man with unclean lips, and I live among a people with unclean lips. Yet I've seen the King, the Lord of heavenly forces. Then one of the winged creatures flew to me, holding a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed and your sin is removed. Then I heard the Lord's voice saying, whom should I send and who will go for us? I said, I am here. Send me the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. You might recognize me. Let me get this camera zoomed the right way. Oh, there we are. Can you see me? Can you recognize me? Oh, I might not be the person you think I am, but I know you know who I am. I mean, I'm not like, I don't know, like that that one on the greeting card from Hallmark. I'm not like the one who just magically appears in some Renaissance art with a halo over my head. I'm, well, I'm an angel. And I look a little like your pastor today, but I'm telling you, I am an angel for the purposes of our sermon today. And I am in almost every scene of this story. That makes me practically the main character. We'll get back to that. But I am in every scene. I think you'll remember me from the first week in Advent when we talked about how I appeared to Mary and Mary told you all about me. And then 
the second week? Well, Joseph told you all about me and how I was there in his dream. And here we are in the third week of Advent, and guess what? I'm in the scene too. In fact, I totally own this scene. Here's what happened. Oh. Well, first, let me tell you this important thing. Angels aren't exactly what you might think we are. You see, angels are, are not people. Angels are created beings that God made at the beginning of creation. We just always were. And we don't have a gender. That's a misconception that looks really cool on greeting cards and looks really cool when you're making ornaments to hang up on the tree. In fact, the Bible usually refers to us as he, but angels are genderless because we don't need a gender. God is the one we love. We don't reproduce. We don't make more angels. Angels just the ones who are have always been. In fact, the thing about angels is we pretty much just do one thing. Now that's really weird for you guys to understand because I hear that there are some multitaskers out there in this group. And don't get me wrong, I have a lot of energy. But I do one thing. And I know you guys do lots of things. Like, um, like sometimes you wake up in the morning and you throw in a load of laundry and you take a shower and you clean the house and you take the laundry out and you fold the laundry and you um, get some breakfast and you get ready, you get your kids up, you get ready to go to work, you go to work and you do a million things at work and then you, you think of what you're supposed to be doing later so that you can get it kind of organized. And then you go home and you make supper and you do some more laundry because let's face it, 10 times a day we have to do laundry. And then you do the dishes because they are always there, aren't they? They're, they're just like a like like the guests that won't go away. You know, there they are. And those are the things that you guys do all the time. And angels... We do one thing, but we do it all the time. Like it's the thing we do. That's what I'm doing with you today. And that is what happened on that night so long ago. You see, the one thing we do is we, we tell people news. We deliver messages. Angelos, that's the Greek word for angel, and it means messenger. I am a messenger, and I could not have been more exciting, more excited than this day. Oh, I was such a part of this story that I couldn't let it go. And when I was having a little trouble sleeping, because let's face it, I have a lot of energy. I may have shared that before, but I wasn't sleeping and so I thought, mm, I wonder what the Holy Family's doing. I should go check on them. I haven't seen them since I was in that dream. And there's got to be more news. So I went down to the manger and I peeked inside. And you will never believe what I saw. I mean... You will never believe what I saw. There was a baby. Oh, he was so cute. Oh, you would have loved him. He was adorable. And I couldn't not tell people because that's the one thing I do is tell people the news. I am a professional gossip. And so I had to find somebody to tell but on this particular night, it was quiet, too quiet. So I couldn't find anybody. 
mean, all the businesses were closed. Everybody was in bed sleeping. I went to the houses of people with infants. I was like, oh, they'll be up. They're always up. But guess what? Even the parents of babies were asleep. And the babies were sleeping. But I had to tell somebody that's my one job. So I went and I just, I started looking. I combed the countryside. And I saw something on the hillside. Something moved. Only it was dark and creepy. And it was, it was moving really, really slowly and ominously. And then I, I figured it out. It was a wolf, a wolf on the side of the hill. And it was creeping toward this little lamb that was sleeping so peacefully, but way too far away from the other sheep. I shuddered at the thought of what was gonna happen to this poor little lamb. Then all of a sudden, the wolf jumped up in the air suddenly and had this look of horror on his face and pain. And I realized that someone was throwing rocks at the wolf and the wolf ran away. And then I saw her, a shepherd girl on the hillside. She saved that little lamb. She scooped that lamb up out far away from everyone else and brought that lamb back right into the middle of where those sheep were. And she loved it. And I knew that's when I knew. Well, maybe that wasn't when I knew because when she got back, all of her friends, the other shepherds, they were awake too. And they came over and they gathered around her while she was protecting the sheep, the lamb. She, they gathered around her to make sure that that wolf didn't have any friends that were coming back to get them. Oh my goodness. I knew these were my people. These were the people who I was going to tell the most important story of all time to. People who were so full of love for that little lamb and so full of love for each other, they would appreciate the story. They would understand that a little lamb had been born who needed protecting and needed to be loved because one day he would save them all, save us all. And he was so adorable. How could I keep that to myself? So I told them, oh, I told them. It was amazing. I told them everything. And I really scared them. That's when I remembered what Michael had told me. Gabriel, stop telling people things without saying, don't be afraid first. I always forget that part. So then I told them, don't be afraid. It's okay. Don't be scared. Something amazing is happening and you're a part of the story. Well, while everyone else was asleep, I delivered that news. I thought I was going to have to wake everybody up with an earthquake, but thank goodness the shepherds were awake. Um, I'm so glad though that I saw them because they were the right ones. 
course, there were other things happening. I'm not supposed to leave in the middle of the night. I get in trouble sometimes. I'm not going to lie. And, well, one of the angels got up for a drink of water and noticed I was gone and assumed I was getting into some kind of trouble, like I'm always in trouble or something. Anyway, they came to find me, and they found me right when I was giving the message to the shepherds. They were so excited. They forgot all about how I had left when I wasn't supposed to, and how I had wandered off, and how I had kind of creeped in and looked at Mary and Joseph when I wasn't supposed to. They forgot all about everything and got so excited. They started singing and they started praising God. And I, my friends, was off the hook. I mean, we were all really excited. And the shepherds got really excited too. In fact, they got so excited, they decided to go and see what happened. And it was just like I told them. They found it all just the way I said. And they were so excited. You know, I told you at the beginning that it was like I was the main character because I'm in all the scenes. But I'm not the main character. The message is the main character. And the message is the word that came to us that night. The main character of this story is the word of God incarnate. God living among us. Emmanuel come to save us. And I get to tell that story to the world. I have the best job ever. I hope you hold that message in your heart too. I hope that you love and protect that message, that lamb, that word of God that is in you. Because one day he will grow into your savior. If he's not yet, if, if there's still some parts that are advent, that, that are waiting to be revealed, have patience. Because he is your savior. That is the message. That is the only message that matters. As for us angels, we haven't just been sitting around for 2,000 years. We're out there. We're everywhere. We are delivering still the message of hope and joy. The message that a Savior has been born. Don't be afraid of God's news for you today. Because it is still the sweetest story ever told. Merry Christmas from all of us angels. When so many things around us change and when we have to keep adapting to, to things we never expected, some things do remain the same. Let us find comfort today in the words of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This holiday season, we don't care exactly how you choose to give. We just want to help you give in whatever way you want to give. So whether you're making a donation to the church or whether um, you have some hats and mittens and um, new coats or food to distribute to the food pantries, whatever it is that, that you want to share this holiday season, it is definitely needed in our community right now. We're, we're seeing an awful lot of need and um, the phone is ringing off the hook for people who need things. And so we really want to make sure that our community is loved and cared for, that they know that God loves them and that their neighbors care about them, even, even when things are rough. So if you have any way that you would like to help or if you have some ideas and you're not sure what to do, give us a call or drop things by the church and we will help distribute whatever you share. Blessings to you this holiday season and blessings to all in our community as we love one another in the name of Christ. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace now and forevermore. Amen.